Hello everyone and welcome back to the dork side. I am the dork in the road and today we're going to talk about five things no one tells you about motorcycling. That's right everyone, I am the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you know when I post awesome new content just like this. There are a ton of articles, videos, hell I've made a few videos, uh, full of advice, tips and tricks for new motorcycle riders or people thinking about getting into motorcycling. A lot has been said about the joyful freedom aspect, the exploration aspect. That's like no other form of transportation on earth. 100% true. And if you're thinking about getting into motorcycling, strongly encourage you to consider doing that. Like all hobbies, it's not perfect. There are some hidden downsides, even uh, things that are less awesome about it. It's not all sunshine and rainbows is all I'm saying. So here's a few hidden downsides, a few disadvantages, really a few things to be aware of as you move into your motorcycling career. And the first one, I'm afraid we're gonna have some experience with today, we shall see. But uh, when you ride a motorcycle, bugs get everywhere. If you are a person who is averse to dead bugs or bug guts, you may wanna reconsider getting into this hobby because there is not a ride. It doesn't even matter what time of year it is. There's always bugs, but the summer is by far the worst. But basically every time you get home from a ride, you're gonna find your gear, your motorcycle, windscreen, headlights, fairings, everything is gonna be covered in dead bugs. You are gonna kill a lot of insects. If you firmly believe in the right of insects to live their lives, you maybe should not become a motorcyclist because you will murder more insects every ride uh, than you can possibly imagine. So uh, you're gonna get bug guts all over your jacket, your gloves, your helmet. They're gonna be all over your bike. You're gonna get really uh, intimately familiar with cleaning dead bugs off of things. Pro tip, either just spray it down with some water or a wet paper towel, lay it across it and let them moisten up a bit and then, uh, and then wipe them off. Bugs everywhere, there's no escaping them. Number two thing that uh, they don't tell you about motorcycling is uh, your gear gets funky, man. I mean, there's nothing between you and the elements but a jacket and some pants and some gloves. And uh, especially again in the summer, but it's true in the winter too. You sit on a motorcycle for a few hours, a few hundred miles, and you're gonna sweat. And that sweat's got nowhere to go but into your gear. I usually recommend buying used motorcycle gear, but you definitely wanna wash it thoroughly. So you'll have to wash your gear a lot because your gear gets funky, it gets sweaty, uh, especially in the summer when it's hot. But like I said, in the winter too, uh, when I'm wearing heavy warmer gear and then you know, out riding in the woods or riding trails or whatever, I sweat and the sweat gets in my gear and my gear gets funky. It doesn't always smell good. And yeah, you could wash it every week, but nobody that I know does. You're just gonna have a general sort of pervasive aroma in and around your gear. And that sounds gross, but it's just part of the experience, man. If you use it, if you ride, your gear is gonna get sweaty and it's gonna have a little bit of a uh, exhaust, open road, BO smell to it. So wash it often, Febreze it, invest in Febreze if you're gonna get into motorcycling, but just know that your gear will not stay pristine, fresh as a daisy like it looks in the store. Your gear is gonna get worn in, it's gonna get dirty, it's gonna need to be washed. And so that's number two, gear does not stay nice on its own. Uh, you're definitely gonna get the elements and sweat and mud, and especially if you're riding off road at all, everything I have has got mud on it that just won't come off. Number three thing that they don't tell you about motorcycling is, unlike in a car where, you know, if you have something you're in a car and you don't want to wear your jacket, you just throw it in the passenger seat and go in the store or whatever, right? On a motorcycle, if you ride somewhere, you have to deal with all that stuff. You can't really just leave it on the bike because people are dishonest, unless you've got a top case or some panniers or something, in which case, good for you, but many motorcycles don't. So you've got a helmet, and if you're wearing gear, and you should be, then at minimum, you've got a helmet, a jacket, and gloves that you have to deal with every time you go somewhere and leave your motorcycle. So uh, even if you go over to a friend's house, you gotta find a place to stash all that stuff. I've ridden my motorcycle for work and I like, I go into schools and classrooms and I have to carry my jacket and helmet with me around, um, which the kids think is cool, but that's not why I do it. 
doesn't hurt. But you definitely have this sort of pervasive element of having to deal with your gear. What do I do with my helmet? What do I do with my jacket? All the time. Uh, and since motorcycling gear is not the most comfortable casual wear, there's also the you're uncomfortable sometimes. You gotta wear full pants and if you're wearing your full gear, you're gonna sit at a restaurant uncomfortable in your riding gear because that's what you need to be wearing to go riding. Or get a helmet lock or just trust people, I guess, but eh. What sucks about losing your gear is if someone, you know, takes your helmet. If you leave your helmet on your bike and someone takes it or even just damages it in some way, you then can't get home because you can't ride without it. So stuff's pretty important, so I don't like to take chances with it. Number four thing that uh, nobody tells you about motorcycling is, and this is, this is a little sacrilegious and some of you, some of you are gonna be upset with me for saying this and I'm sorry. And some of you maybe don't feel this way, I don't know, but I do. Sometimes it is easier to just take your car. Assuming you have a car, some of you are one vehicle people and you ride your motorcycle everywhere and you're hardcore and I salute you. But for those of us who have a motorcycle and a car, anytime it's over 90 degrees, I really struggle to talk myself into putting all my riding gear on. I just, it's hot and um, 90 to 100 degrees. Man, it is so tempting to just slide into the car with the air conditioning and just take it where I need to go. It's also faster because I don't have to stop, change into my gear, change my boots, put my helmet on, get the bike out of the garage. I can just hop in the car and go, no gear. And so sometimes, this isn't to say that riding a motorcycle isn't awesome because it is all the time. And basically every time I get on it, I don't regret it, but there are times when I'm very tempted, very tempted to just get in the car. It's just easier, faster, more convenient, more comfortable, less dangerous. I mean, there's also that, especially if you're going through the city, man, I don't like riding my bike in the city if I can avoid it. Sometimes, and like I said, sacrilegious, but sometimes it is easier to just take your car. You're not always gonna wanna ride the motorcycle. As much as I thought when I first got it, I would ride it everywhere. I have found over my years that is not the case. So that's number four. And number five, this is one that they kind of cover in your training courses, but I didn't, I don't think I realized the degree to which it's true, but on a motorcycle, you are invisible. And I thought that was an exaggeration. I thought that was motorcycle instructors saying, yeah, just pretend like you're invisible, act like you're invisible, make sure that you're always aware of your surroundings. All of that is true, you should always do that. But uh, riding a motorcycle is literally like a cloak of invisibility. I've countless times had someone look directly at me right at me right where i am like i guess i thought it was eye contact but clearly it wasn't and then they just keep driving as if i wasn't there at all i've got on video and i don't ride on the street that much but i've got on video a bunch of times people just running stop signs coming over into my lane uh, just looking right at me and driving right through as if i wasn't there it's terrifying like the other drivers on the road are the most dangerous thing it's not by far by far the most dangerous thing and they just don't see you I mean, high vis helps and all that, but I've been riding, you know, a, a bright white motorcycle and light colored gear and still had it happen. You are effectively invisible. People do not see you. And, uh, and like I said, that's maybe something people tell you, but I didn't realize the degree to which it was true until I got a bunch of experience out on the road. People really don't see you. You are invisible. You have to be on your guard constantly. Like the whole assume you're invisible mantra, it's true, man. So on a motorcycle, you, you have to be hyper vigilant. You can't relax like you can in a car. Because in a car, getting tapped on your rear bumper is like, ah, oh, I'm out a couple hundred dollars for a bumper. But uh, on a motorcycle, if someone rear ends you at a stop sign, you could die. So those are my five. Those are five things, the first five things. Those are five things that I feel like no one tells you when you get into motorcycling. The kind of five cons of motorcycling that no one tells you about. So what do you think? What is something that you wish someone had told you before you started motorcycling? What is a bad thing that nobody told you about about motorcycling when you got started? Something that you didn't realize until you'd ridden for a while? Let me know in the comments, I'm curious. If you enjoyed the video, if you if you had a chuckle or, or learned something new, please consider hitting that like button. That really helps the video, makes it more visible. Helps YouTube know to recommend it to other people, which I appreciate. Appreciate that support. And I also really appreciate the support of my patrons. Thank you, patrons. You're fantastic people. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent! Ooh, that's a 25 mile an hour corner.
Even though it isn't, I think it's just the speed limit increases.